Good afternoon and welcome to Live Jazz New England. I'm your host, Pamela Hines, and my guest today is saxophonist Greg Abate. Greg spends 225 days of the year performing around the world, and he's got several new releases out right now, including Kindred Spirits, Live at Chan's with the late Phil Woods, and featuring Tim Ray on piano, John Lockwood on bass, and Mark Walker on drums. David Franklin of Jazz Times says, multi-saxophonist Greg Abate is a prime example of the rear back and blow school of contemporary bop-based players. The tunes that he writes or chooses are based on the kinds of changes that harmony-oriented jazzmen have favored since the beginning, and he swings through them with an eager and easy virtuosity. This year, he was inducted into the Rhode Island Hall of Fame. He is a longtime friend to WICN, and today he's here to play for you live, and we're going to find out what he's up to later on in the program. So let's get started with the music. Greg Lohman is on bass today, Steve Langone on drums, and I'll be on piano. And here's Charlie Parker's Yardbird Suite.
you. Oh, thank you very much, folks, very much. Hey, today you have, you have Pamela Hines on piano and uh, Greg Lotham on, on bass. Did we announce you guys? Steve Langone on drums. Give him a hand. You know, the greatest guy, man. So, so that was the Yardbird Suite. It was on, uh, that, that tune was included on the, uh, the, my new recording with uh, great Phil Woods, Live at Chance, Kindred Spirits. Doing a few of those tunes today, and, uh, as well as this next one, The End of a Love Affair. Did you go right into it? Sure. It was like, one, two, it was on the damp on it. It's a kind of a samba. One, two, one, two, two, two. <laughs>
so much. Oh, thank you. If you, uh, if you haven't got those, the, the kindred spirits, they're available, you know, in, on all over the Internet. And there's some over here today, too. We have a live audience here today, folks. So we got about, I was just counting, so I'm up to 327. <laughs> yeah. This next tune is a tune on, on, the, on the CD as well. Like I mentioned, I'm going to do a few tunes from that uh, Kindred Spirits recording with the great Phil Woods. It was a ball doing the session last uh, August in 2014, actually, already. You know, and it came out and uh, th uh, released on Wailing City Sound Records in, in 2015. And it's uh, doing pretty well. It, um, it's a double CD set. Uh, so then this next tune on there is uh, um, Cedar's Blues by the great Cedar Walton.
You are tuned into Live Jazz New England. I'm your host, Pamela Hines, and my guest today is Greg Abate. And joining me on piano is Greg Lohman on bass and Steve Langone on drums. You not only have the Kindred Spirit CD out, but um, two other releases that are recent. And I guess I want to just get your um, thoughts and experiences on, on your, your good friend, Phil Woods. Oh, well, the last few years, um, we recorded our first uh, recording, or my first recording is Phil Woods as guest in 2012 in uh, Strasburg, uh, Pennsylvania. And that came out um, in 2013. And since that recording, we have done several um, gigs through the country. We drove, you know, gigs, gigs in Cleveland and Pittsburgh and uh, Boston, New Hampshire, and different places. And following that recording, I had done um, another recording. It's a quartet with uh, the same trio as Kindred Spirits. It's titled Motif, with uh, Tim Ray on piano and John Lockwood and Mark Walker. That seems to be the trio that Wailing City put me with, uh, well, you know, they're friends of mine too, but we recorded two recordings and then the one with Phil with the Kindred Spirits, A Chance, in uh, late, oh, in August of 2014. Well, Phil, you know, was a force of nature and he was a great, um, you know, person as well as the, you know, a tremendous musician and writer and teacher and uh, witty and just uh, a super guy to be around. And uh, personally, you know, it was like, learning a lot from him as far as life and music. So that's what I could say about Phil. And We just had a celebration of his uh, life last Sunday at the Deerhead Inn in uh, Delaware Water Gap where so many friends and family members and great players that he played with and um, that played with him showed up on Sunday and uh, pretty, pretty great uh, time. It was bittersweet. So I noticed, I, just in talking to people, I know that um, Frank Foster wrote right up until the end, and Duke Ellington, when he began, became hospitalized, asked for his keyboard in his hospital room so he could continue to write. He began to write on the back of cards and just to continue the writing until, until the end. So I, I noticed that Phil had um, some help with oxygen. Also another soldier that just um, seemed to play right up, up, up until the end. Yes, he did. He played right up till. Uh he, he did a, a concert in uh, Pittsburgh uh, with the Pittsburgh Symphony. He did Bird with Strings, and apparently he he led, played he just played it right out that day, and, and that was his last day. He he retired from playing the alto saxophone, but he he said he was gonna still write and teach and just go on with that because the um, the um, emphysema had taken a hold of him pretty pretty hard. I guess he, apparently. He had become ill after that and then uh, recently passed away in September uh, from uh, certain causes of, I think, uh, pneumonia and you know, horrible things. So so we uh, have these um, great recordings. The, um, the Live at Chance is just, it's just great. You've got little cuts in there where you uh, had a little bit of dialogue and some chat and stuff and some really funny stuff. So it's, a, uh, it's a really a great double uh, set for people to... Uh, Pick up. It's on the Whaling City Sound label, and it's called Kindred Spirits, Live at Chance. So you will want to go to uh, gregabate.com, I assume, and they, they can pick it up there. Is yes, right? I could do that. So uh, yeah. the other thing I wanted to get to just before we get playing again is um, your experience with the Artie Shaw Orchestra. The 70s was uh, the Ray Charles Orchestra in 73 and 4. Yeah, lead alto playing with Ray. That was like, it was really great because um, I was living in Los Angeles and I was living in a in a, a pad with uh, three, or uh, four other musicians, and two other professionals that weren't musicians. They were business people and they were different. But they had, they had. I was I was running out of money, and they were getting bugged with me for being there and not putting any money into the place. And I, you know. I was smoking cigarettes. We didn't eat much anyway. We just had these little pan-fried breads with butter. But they said, you know, Greg, you've been here for so long. You know, you you gotta, you know, you, run, you haven't paid rent in a couple of months. You know, you know, you're gonna have to maybe go somewhere else. So you gotta have to get a gig because I I lost my gig. Was playing a, with this band and it broke up. So I went down to the Union, the 47. And I saw Ray Charles auditions. So. I went to audition and, and uh, I got the gig playing lead, so I came back and I said, "Gee, I'm glad Ray had an opening. You know, I and I got my gig. I got my gig." So they, uh, Ray was great. So the Artie Shaw band with Dick Johnson in the '80s. That was I played tenor on that band, in uh, two years with a lot of great players. And 
also learned a lot from the Ray Charles band. It was like going to another school. You know, I went to Berkeley College of Music, and you know, I went to the Ray Charles School of Music, and I went to Artie Shaw of Music, and I went to the Dick Johnson School of Alto Saxophone, which I'm playing. This is Dick Johnson's horn. He's my men one of my mentors, and Gary is his son and drummer. You know, they, I was able to purchase this horn, and it's been like part of me for the last few years. You know, and uh, Dick Johnson was uh, one of the greatest. Uh, I'll tell you, not only a great alto player, but clarinet, and you know, the greatest guy. You know witty, good, good heart. So I understand the tune that we're going to do next is um, about somebody in your life. Two, two oh. people, right? Well, it's, one, it's an animal one, one and a person. person. Because uh, my girlfriend, Carrie, we've been together for about 16 years now, but her mom is, you know, Carrie Tracy, but her mom's Lee Tracy. So her nickname was Mrs. T before I even knew her, you know. And when my, I got, I adopted two cats about 16 years ago, and my son, but the, both my sons named Mr. and Mrs. T. So when I met my mother, my, Carrie's mom, you know, I said, you know, my cat has the same name as you. So it's got like that. And you have the same name as my cat. And they bonded. So I wrote a tune titled Mrs. T. It's on my Motif album. I was going to play it. But uh, Tom Lucy was at a gig where I was playing last week. Uh, and it was playing in, in, in Providence and with Gary Simoleon and Jared Sims. We did a three baritone thing. And so he asked me to bring my Barry. Uh, ironically, that I played Barry on this tune, so I'm going to grab the Barry and play Mrs. T. You are tuned into Live Jazz New England, and my guest is Greg Abate with Greg Lohman on bass and Steve Langone on drums. Per order or request of Tom Lucci, Greg's going to break out the baritone. Thank you. 
Putting his uh, berry down, so this is jet, live jazz New England on WICN and truly live. <laughs> Steve Langone is on drums and uh, Greg Loman on bass. I'm Pamela Hines on piano, and here he comes, and we're going to do a special tribute that you wrote for uh, Phil next. Yes, right? this is a, a, a tune I wrote for Phil Woods. Um, actually, the day he passed away, I was in class at Ron College teaching uh, my composition class, ironically. And um, I heard that he passed away. It was a shock because I thought he was just recovering, getting rip, getting well. And I just um, was in my room there, and I just wrote this tune. So it's recorded on a new album that's not out yet, but I've been fortunate to record quite a bit lately, and you know, it, it helps me become a better player because I see how, how many mistakes I make with my sessions. No, that's, you know, it's always a work in progress, but this is a farewell Phil Woods.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to get a few things out of the way so we can play our last tune, and uh, just in case we run out of time. I, first of all, I want to f- just get from uh, you where listeners can purchase your CDs and find out about your next coming appearances. Well, it would be uh, on my website, gregabate.com, and um, I'm going to be at the uh, Aspire Center for the Arts in Plymouth Friday night for the, the Plymouth Jazz Festival. And then on June 2nd, Thursday night, I'll be at the Narrow Center for the Arts um, a tribute to F- Phil Woods celebrating his life w- with the band with featuring Richie Cole, my good buddy Richie, and we'll be there with the trio. And uh, so that's the Narrow Center for the Arts next Thursday night in Fall River, Massachusetts. And this Friday is um, the Aspire Center for the Arts in Plymouth. So before we get to our last tune, I'd just like to thank my guest Greg Abate thank for you. being on the show today. Thanks for having me in here. And thanks for letting me uh Take a Thanks, copy Tom. of your new tune for Phil. I really appreciate that. You're and uh, joining me on piano has been uh, Greg Lohman on bass and Steve Langone on drums. <laughs> Live Jazz New England has been made possible through the support of the Francis A. and Jacqueline H. Harrington Foundation, the Stoddard Charitable Trust, the Piano Mill of Rockland, Mass., Rick Hansen, Catherine L. Coleman, and Brad Pierce of Starfleet Audio in Whitensville, Mass., And we also want to thank our listening and live audience today. So what would you like to finish up with? We're going to, thanks a lot, uh, Jazz Land, Jazz New England, WICN, station to listen to for jazz all day long. This is Greg Abate, and I want to close the, uh, the set with the Charlie Parker favorite, Confirmation.
Thank you. Pamela Hines on piano. Steve Langone, drums. Greg Lotham on bass.